Well, hey there. Welcome into the studio. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You're squarely tuned in to, you know, it's the Hidden Entrepreneur Show. And I'm pretty sure you also know I am your host, Josh Carey. My guest today has been a holistic chiropractor for over 25 years in the New Jersey area, close to my heart, my home state. I love the Great Garden State. Her purpose is to promote the physical, emotional, and nutritional well-being of her patients by achieving an optimal state of health and harmony through natural, drugless health care. I want in on that. I'm a fan. Let's turn the microphone over. Help me welcome. It's Dr. Donna Perillo. How are you, doctor? Um, good, Josh. Thank you for having me on. Absolute pleasure. So glad to be in this moment with you. Looking on paper, you have a lot of letters next to your name, which I appreciate because that really gives us a broad perspective. The perspective I want to start with, because reading your website, reading all about you, I mean, Good, good for your website, first of all. It has so many articles. It has so many videos. It has, I know you're a podcast host yourself. We'll talk all about that. But one thing that kept sticking out to me while reading everything on your site is that word emotional. Like it says, your purpose is to promote the physical, emotional, and nutritional well-being. And that word emotion kept coming into play over and over. Tell me your, your thoughts and perspective on that. Do our emotions color everything? Well, that is definitely my philosophy. I think there's a um, mental, emotional, spiritual aspect to us. We're just not physical beings. And I, I think that a lot of times, a lot of our physical ailments are caused by what we're thinking, uh, how we're feeling, and we create that space. I'm a big Tony Robbins fan, NLP. I've done uh, hypnosis with Richard Bandler, who was one of the founders of NLP, who is also a musician, by the way. And I, I just love um, that whole concept because it makes so much sense. And sometimes a patient comes in you know, when you're practicing as long as me, you know, you, what you see and what even younger practitioners is you see 80% of the time people respond. It's that other 20% that, you know, 10, 20% is like, well, why didn't, why aren't they responding like the other 80%? And sometimes there's an emotional block and that emotional block could be anything. It could be something that happened when they were a kid. It could be something that they're holding on to that they never really got rid of. Maybe they, maybe they went through a divorce or they lost uh, a loved one and they think they got over it, but they're still holding on to that. And that, that is uh, what happens is the fascia, which is what covers the muscles. So if you, I know you're going to ask me what that is. So I'll just tell you, if you looked at a chicken leg and you saw that thin, uh, skin around like if you remove the skin there's that other layer that's fascia and so fascia holds that memory in when you have a trauma so let's just say for instance you had a car accident and every time now you drive to that spot where you have that car accident your body might tighten up even though now there isn't any danger whatsoever but your brain remembers and the fascia remembers that that's where you got hurt. So when we talk about emotional release, um, a lot of people know about tapping, EFT, uh, emotional uh, you know, release technique. Um, well, I said that wrong, but the EFT, emotional freedom technique. Um, a lot of people know about that. But things like that really make a difference in the healing process. So, uh, you know, you have to you have to approach the person and everybody's individual because sometimes people will come in and they'll go well well what would you do for this well i don't know because you got there you'd have 10 people come in with sciatica but they got there 10 different ways hmm. it's not it's not just cut and dry so if you go to the doctor and you have reflux 
okay, just take this little pill and fine. If you come to me and you have reflux, well, I have to figure out, okay, well, what's going on? Why do you have reflux? So, so yeah, is that going to be, I, I, I completely agree with and understand the whole emotional block creates your physical well-being or lack thereof. So you, as the doctor, do you, is it not just doing what you do physically, but do you also then engage in a therapy session, for lack of a better phrase, to, to determine where an emotional might be? Well, I'm not a therapist, and we do actually have a therapist in the office. Um, so a lot of patients will see him. But what I do is I try to unlock the block. So I use, sometimes I'll use some of the tapping techniques. Um, I have a a program in my office. It's called Brain Tap. Uh, Dr. Patrick Porter. Uh, he's a very interesting man. Somebody you might want to have as a guest. Uh, he. Uh, we traveled very similar circles with Tony Robbins at Silver Mind Control and, and all of these NLP things. Um, and what he did is um, he took well what I was trying what what I've done, but he took it to a, a, a huge level. So what he does is he took. Um, music and uh, sound and light therapy. And he developed these eye lights and then people have written programs. In fact, I've written one of his programs on chakra healing. And it he has different programs from weight loss, pain, neuropathy, wealth management, depression, cancer. And so I use that in the office for people. I, I introduce them to that. Um, and you know, they're welcome to use it when they're here. Some of them might want to use it at home. So it's, you know, it's a pretty easy thing to do. I have another thing called heart math, which is a biofeedback mechanism. So things like that, where people become aware because people we're running around like crazy, especially here in New Jersey. We're nuts. We're nuts compared to the rest of the country. The two coasts were, we're just crazy. And so anything that makes you stop and smell the roses is going to help you. It's just going to help your healing process. But a lot of times people are, they don't even know that other areas are suffering. They, they have no clue. They'll come in and say they have neck pain. So when I do an exam, I'll do a, a full exam and they'll go, oh, I didn't know I had pain there. Oh, I didn't know I had that. And then all of a sudden I'll say, well, well, you know, this area goes to your, to your stomach. Do you ever have any t stomach issues? Well, not really. And then maybe 10 minutes later, well, you know, sometimes I have diarrhea or constipation. They told me I had IBS, but we usually, when we go down the list of medications, it's, it's funny because people think that they, okay, do you have any, any problems? No. So then we go down the meds and there's, blood pressure medication and cholesterol medication. And I said, I thought you said you didn't have any high blood pressure. Well, I don't, I take the medication. So it's the same thing with a diabetic. It's yeah, I take my, I take my drugs and I, so I don't have it, but, but you do, you do have it. The, the medication is, is managing it. It's not healing it. And you know, these things, these things drive me crazy. It drives me crazy where there are commercials where the, the man wakes up in the middle of the night and he's going into the kitchen and he's eating all this stuff and he's okay because he took the pill that is going to stop it. And so does anybody realize that the body's telling them that that's not a good idea? You're clearly against pills or medication as a primary tool for your for your patients. Talk to me about that. Okay, so I, I definitely believe in drugs. I think that they save lives, and I think in, in some cases they are very needed. But I think that we are overprescribed in this country, the amount of opioids people are given. I understand nobody wants to be in pain, but you know, get them through the crisis and then send them somewhere chiropractic, acupuncture, physical therapy, massage, yoga, anything, send them somewhere so that they can heal, so that they can strengthen that body part 
and strengthen that, that their whole being, really. Um, I had severe allergies and asthma. If I didn't have drugs, I'd be dead because I had really bad asthma attacks. So I'm not against drugs. I just think sometimes cholesterol, they want, I have patients to come in and their cholesterol is maybe 140 and they're on medication. I'm, I, I don't think that's a good idea. I think there are too many side effects. And, and a lot of times I'll say, well, did you try this or did you try that? No, they just put me on the drug. Well, why didn't you try changing your diet? Why didn't you try something natural? So what I'm saying is before you go to the drugs and the surgery, rule everything out unless it's a matter of life and death. It's absolutely crazy because as you were talking about a patient with 140 cholesterol, um, which isn't really so, so terrible, but more to the point here, you, I was thinking this and you brought it up before prescribing the medicine. Did they suggest, well, let's change your habits. Let's change your lifestyle. Let's, it, what do we all know instinctively at this point? Diet and exercise, right? Try one, try something, do something. And she said, no. No. Hmm. So, and that, you know, you know, now some people will come in and they'll go, well, I can't do that. Okay. So, but at least you were given those options. So I think what happens is people are not given other options. You know, as a chiropractor, you know we're just so discriminated against. So we're used to it. We're, we're always the underdog, which is okay, because, you know, I always root for the underdog. Um, but, you know, you're, but you see it. I mean, you see it. You see these people on all these drugs. They come into me for nutrition, and they're, they're like bags of, of drugs and vitamins. And, I, and a lot of times I'll say, well, why are you taking these vitamins? Oh, well, I saw it on Dr. Oz. I saw it, uh, I, I saw it on Google. I, well, I said, but how do you know that you're balanced? And they just look at me. Well, it sounded like me, so I take it. And so just because something's natural doesn't mean you need it. And doesn't, you, you know, you have to know, especially if you're on medication, what you're dealing with. So when I'm doing nutrition on patients, especially when they're on medication, I have a software program called Science-Based Nutrition, and I put all their blood work in and their urine and, um, you know, if they did any uh, hair analysis or saliva testing, any of those you know, neurotransmitters, those types of things go in the computer, all their medications go in, and then I get a printout and it tells me, okay, this medication, uh, the side effects, and it could deplete maybe CoQ10. Uh, it's interesting because you take CoQ10 for the heart a lot of times and the heart medication depletes your CoQ10. <laughs> so a lot of cardiologists now will recommend uh, CoQ10. I love that you mentioned uh, knowingly, certainly, that chiropractors are the underdog. And uh, well, first of all, I'm a fan throughout my life, many times throughout my life, varying points for various reasons. Um, I've gone, I've engaged, I've, uh, I, I've gotten significant results from chiropractic care. But I know, I'm very well aware, like you said, the, the reputation is, is, is that of the underdog or even um, the outcast in some circles. Why is that? Yeah, I asked that question myself. I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of funny because um, they embrace acupuncture, which I think is a lot more esoteric than chiropractic, uh, more than they embrace chiropractic I, I have I still have so many patients that come in and I'll, I'm not, I can't tell my doctor he doesn't want me to go to the chiropractor don't touch my neck you're gonna kill me and I look at them and um, and so after they come in and we do the exam a lot of times because we such, do such a thorough exam they're, they're saying they, they look at us and go wow I've never had an exam that thorough I've never had a doctor spend so much time with me and well, because we need to know what we can do and not do. If you're trained properly, then you know what to do. So it's funny because sometimes somebody comes in and they're maybe in their 70s or 80s and, oh, so I look at them and I go, I would never touch your neck at your age. And first of all, without an x-ray, but even with an x-ray, if you've never been adjusted. Now, I have 90-year-olds I adjust, but they've been adjusted forever. Um, but 
but to have a new patient who's never been to a chiropractor, never been adjusted, and it's so funny because they think we're going to, I don't know what they think we're going to do to them. It's so funny. And, and we use a lot of instrumentation in the office. I mean, we, we do the traditional chiropractic, the popping and cracking, of course, but there's so many different chiropractic techniques that are out there. And we use uh, many of them in the office. So when we have our older patients, which I, I have a lot of senior patients, they, they followed me through the years. We're getting old together. And we use different instrumentation in the office and, and things like laser. Um, I have a, 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 a beamer, which is called pulsed electromagnetic field. I have a detox foot bath. So we do a lot. I like all the toys. Can you tell I like all the toys? I love the gadgets. So my friends make fun of me. You're always at seminars. You're always with these gadgets. I said, I, because that's the technology. That's where we're going. We're going towards vibrational healing. What are we doing? Laser, right? What, what are we doing now? We're doing laser. I love that you said vibrational healing because really we are all vibrational beings. So I imagine that it's, uh, it, it's all to finally connect that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's, that's, as, a, as a musician, that just makes sense to me because if I'm, if I'm playing an instrument and it's out of tune, then it, it, it's, it's dissonant. If I'm, if I'm playing an instrument and it's in tune, there's harmony. So when you're healthy, there's harmony. And when you're not healthy, there's dissonance. Hmm. It's just, uh, you know, the wavelengths that we're vibrating at. And, and sometimes what I do with patients is I, I try to explain to them, I'll, I'll say to them, and I do this on my podcast and I'm, I'm trying actually to set up a, a coaching class to do this with people. So they become more aware of that emotional, spiritual relationship. So I'll say to them, I said, you know, think about one of the worst days of your life. Think about, you know, somebody died, you know, something horrific happened. And, and, and so they think, and then I go, okay, well now I want you to think about the best day of your life, day you got married, day you had your first child, best day of your life. And immediately you could feel the difference in your right did you feel the difference yeah immediately you feel the difference of thinking of something sad versus thinking of something happy and i think i think sometimes we get stuck on replay you know that song replay <laughs> mm. i know our mind becomes our biggest trap our biggest enemy because we live there and play like you said over and over again right right I, I had a patient once talking about emotional, um, here's somebody that had pain, had no financial worries, um, good family life, uh, husband, kids, everything, agoraphobic, couldn't leave the house. So I had started to give them homework. I said, I said, I want you to go home and I want you to list what you're thankful for because Sometimes people say, well, I can't think of anything. And I look at them like, well, can you see? Can you hear? You know, if you, if you, if you really want, want to not feel sorry for yourself, go to like a cancer center and look at the kids and look at the, the patients there. And then, tell, then walk out of there and tell me you have nothing to be grateful for. Wow. So I want to, I want to, connect the dots and go back for a minute to see how exactly you arrived in this magnificent place. Take us back, if you will, to Donna as a child growing up. Paint that picture, please. What was all that like? What was your home life like? So uh, my home life was good. Um, I was an only child for almost eight years, and I was the only granddaughter for more than that. So I was very spoiled. And um, at the age of five, I developed asthma and allergies. So my parents, you know, took me to the doctor. Uh, I got diagnosed and I started to take medication for that. And I would have asthma attacks every night from September to January, two to three o'clock in the morning. And then the rest of the year would be sporadic, but really bad allergies. As a five-year-old? As a five-year-old, yeah. 
I have a five-year-old daughter, so I can I, I can totally relate or not relate, but you know, understand what how wow, even for you or as a parent. Hmm. Right. So here I am, I'm the only child. <laughs> and my mom lost her first child at four weeks old. So you can only imagine. And here I am, sick as a dog. I'm I'm so I'm always on antibiotics. I'm everything, anytime I get a cold, it goes to bronchitis. Uh, so all the antibiotics, then I had a constipation problem. So I remember as a little kid taking that castoria. I don't know if anybody remembers that. It was a liquid, right? And the, I remember them putting the antibiotic in 7-Up to get me to drink it. it was, you, you, like, you can't forget this stuff. It's so traumatic. That's why, that's why you know, when little kids come in, I, I try to make sure that they're not scared because... I don't want them to be traumatized. I think I'm going to give them a needle because they're already so used to it. You go to the doctor, you get a needle. And, and I remember going to the doctor and everything was always the, either that steel blue or that institutional green, I call it. And everything was cold. And you're a little, I mean, think about your daughter and putting that stethoscope and, and in your ears. And I, oh, the ear infections. They used to hold me down to like clean my ears out. It was just, it, it was barbaric, <laughs> but that's, that, that's what, what they were doing. So I did that uh, for about 17 years, and I, and I was an athlete as a kid. And I, I remember I, I played basketball in high school, and it would be, okay, ten, take 10 laps. After two laps, I'd be out in the locker room taking medication. I could never, because, because the worst part in, in basketball season is the fall. So... It, it, was, uh, it was horrible. And then when you're taking that kind of medication, it makes you tired and that makes you depressed. So I was tired and depressed as a teenager. And uh, then I went to college and, uh, and I smoked. I smoked cigarettes. So here's the mentality. Because people look at me and they go, oh, you're such a health nut. You're such a health nut. And I look at them and I go, yeah, well, uh, I was playing in a rock and roll band. I smoked. I was out to all hours of the night trying to get a record deal. And, um, and so what I would do is I would have an asthma attack. I'd take a pill and then I'd light a cigarette. And that was my mentality. So that's why I say people don't know. They, you know, I was, I was ignorant. I wasn't stupid because I didn't know. I just was ignorant. And then I started, when I went to this chiropractor over here in Pompton Plains, Dr. Jay Panola, uh, what a sweetheart, what a great uh, chiropractor. Um, he started to educate me a little bit. He did some blood work. He explained things to me that made a lot of sense. Your body's having an antibody antigen. I don't know what the man's talking about, but okay. I did this 17 years. Let me try this. And that was back in the good old days when everybody had $100 deductibles and 80-20. <laughs> and unlimited visits. So, uh, so I went. I went, people thought I was crazy, and uh, it came around to September, I didn't have one asthma attack, not one. Hmm. I mean, if, you know, when you're suffering like that, and that happens, that is life-changing. So, he, then I started to really uh, think about it, because I wasn't getting my record deal, and it was like, okay, what am I gonna do now with the rest of my life? I'm not bartending, that's for sure, and waitressing. And uh, so what do I want to do? Because I, you know, school, I always loved school. So, um, and I didn't want to teach. I had started as music ed. I did not want to teach. I did not want to do the flutophone thing, um, which was what I was headed to do. And I didn't want to do that. I really wanted to do film scoring. That's what I went to, I, in my head, I wanted to do film scoring. So anyway, that's, that's what happened to me. I went to him. I was, I think I was 22. And, uh, and then I started and then I decided, okay, I'm going to go back to school. So I, I did a couple of years at Willie Peaks. I had to get all the sciences and then I did chiropractic school. And then after that I did, I got my master's in nutrition. And then after that I got my diploma in sports injuries. And then after that I got my naturopathic degree and, um, you know, I don't know, I have other certifications, I can't even remember, but I, you know, it's constant, 
you know, when you practice, that's why they call it practice because it's constantly new things and you you want to try to help that, you know, that, that challenge case where you, okay, why are they not responding? How can I help these people? Especially when they want to be helped, when they're willing to do whatever it takes. So, wow, so much in that story. I want to go back and unravel, least of which is um, your your rock of ages era. My goodness, Donna Perillo as a rock and roll musician. I want to hear more about that. But first, going back to the beginning, um, up until eight years old, you said you were the only child. And then you mentioned that your mom at four weeks old lost her first child. Can you talk to us about that? How and when were you told about that? Yeah, you know, I don't know exactly when I was told about that, but he... um I have a brother uh, that would have been older than me and that, my mom had a lot of trouble having children. And so she had some kind of procedure and apparently it worked because then she got pregnant with my brother. Um, and he was a preemie. I think if he were born now, he probably would live, but he was a preemie and he had double pneumonia. He was born with double pneumonia and he died four weeks later and they actually, they had a coffin. And <laughs> so very traumatic for my mom and my dad. And then I came along, she was in that labor with me 24 hours with me. So, and then, so my mom actually had seven pregnancies and only three of us lived. Hmm. So she had three miscarriages and one that was born and died. So that was, uh, and my mom, you know, that was always her thing. She just wanted to be a mom because she lost her mom when she was 16. So it was very, very hard. My mom, I, I mean, I can't complain. I, especially as you get older. I mean, I, my parents, I couldn't ask for better. I couldn't have ordered better parents. They were, uh, they were fantastic. And what about you? Um, you have children yourself? I do not have stepchildren, but I do not have children. You do not have children. Was that a conscious choice? Uh, yes. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Okay. Do you think uh, because of what you witnessed your mother and so forth? Uh, I, I wonder about that to, sometimes because I used to think, God, how, how, the, how does that, because we treat a lot of pregnant women, my associate, that's her specialty. And I just, it looks so scary to me. <laughs> it's just a scary thing. Hmm. I mean, I know most women go through it, but it is scary. Wow. So when you were um, in, in your, it, it was when, when you met the, uh, the chiropractor yourself, early 20s, that changed the trajectory of your life? Yes, it was my early 20s. I was actually, I was bartending at my parents' restaurant. Um, and the the one of the waiters it's really interesting one of the waiters threw a crooked pen on the on the bar and he said you should go see this guy and i said why and he said well he could probably help your back back pain and headaches because i had had a couple of bad acts car accidents hmm. and he said but he might be able to help your allergies and i looked at him like what's he going to do for my allergies so i never i didn't go and then i was getting my hair permed because i was in a rock band uh, and, and of course, heart was the, the band that we wanted to emulate, you know, with the spandex and the, the fro. And I'm sitting there waiting for the woman to come in. And there's that crooked pen with the same doctor's name. So at that point, I said, okay, this is too, yeah. you know, coincidental here. So then I called and I went. And that changed my life. Okay, so before we go down that road rock band how and when were you always musically inclined was this something you were pursuing yeah i played guitar since i was 11 and um, rock guitar well i got a guitar when i was 11 and then um i was taking lessons but i wanted to learn all the i wanted to learn the rock solos it, you know, it was, it was the day of Jimi Hendrix and uh, 10 years after and Led Zeppelin. And 
I wanted to learn how to play like that. And I was just learning scales. And so I took some lessons and then I started to just play by ear. And then I took more lessons. Then I found somebody and I took some more lessons and I learned, um, I mean, there's so, it's so involved it, to play the guitar. And uh, in school, I used to, I went to Catholic school and I used to play um, for the mass. They started to do the hullabaloo masses back then. And the, I, I forgot, folk masses, they would call them. And I would play the guitar. And uh, so it would be a couple of guitars and drums. And it, and it, was, it was fun and I really enjoyed it. And then I decided to go to Berklee College of Music. I uh, started out music ed. And then I decided that I wanted to do film scoring. I always liked the film scoring and, and playing. I never really, I'm really basically shy and introverted. I become much more extroverted being a chiropractor, but, um, so in my younger days, I didn't really, I'm not, a, I'm not a performer. I'm not one to get in, you know, I'm not a front person by any means. I mean, I watch, last night I was actually watching um, Lady Gaga's uh, documentary on Netflix. And, you know, it's so interesting because people look at stars and they're, oh, they have everything. And it's, it's really not true at all. It's such a dry, it's, you know, when I was in my 20s, we were, we traveled. You know, we went to Vegas. We opened for Rodney Dangerfield. I was in a show band. Then, you know, and then uh, we did the Stone Pony. We, we opened for Bon Jovi before Ooh. Bon Jovi had his other band, right? So we, we, we opened for uh, Huey Lewis in the News in the City. I, for, I forget. I think it was Trax. And I remember we were the headliners. I think it was Trax or... The guys in the rock band, I remember, because they're, I'm a, now I'm friends with them on Facebook, and they post these photos from back in the 80s, and it, where did you get these? And so, and we were close to getting, getting a record deal. We just never got the record deal, but we opened for Huey Lewis. We did, uh, I remember we, we had over 2,000 people, and after the show, people were coming up to me, asking me for my autograph, and I got so nervous. I said, oh my God, these people don't even know me, and they want my autograph. I don't, we don't even have a hit record, nothing. And it, it, it's like really weird, like groupies are weird. It's weird. So these people, you know, when watching that, you could see, uh, in, in, and, you know, back then, you didn't have to put on as much as a show as you do now. Uh, like Jagger always did and, um, you know, a couple of them always did. But a lot of the bands, if you see them, they just sat, they just stood there. So, but nowadays these performers, oh my God, you know, you go to see uh, uh, Pink and they're, they're flying all over the place. It's amazing. It's amazing. They have to keep the, the performers nowadays, they sing, they dance, they act. Mm. It, it's it's a lot of pressure on them. What were you driven by? Were you looking for stardom, recognition, and celebrity? You know, that's a good question. That is a really good question, and I'm I'm not really sure. I, I ask myself that question sometimes. As a chiropractor, I always hear this voice in the back of my head that, well, you have to help a lot of people. You can't just be in your office. And I've heard this voice for years. And it's like, till this day, I say, well, okay, well, what do you want me to do? What, what is it you want me to do? Because I, I'm very happy in my office with my patients. But there's something, there's something that, that pushes you. And I don't know what it is. But it's funny because uh, back in 2009, I was on vacation. And um, I, I, I thought about writing an exercise DVD. There's another example of, I don't know where it came from. I think sometimes we're channeled things. And, um, and I'm on vacation writing an exercise program. So I write it out and then I say, well, this is boring. You know, we need music. Maybe we should do some visualization and all that. And I hadn't written in years. And I, so I looked at some of the canned music and I said, oh, I'm not, I don't like it. It's too uh, electronic for me. So I started writing. I got a hold of my friend that I went to Berkeley with, Lucille Gaeta, 
unbelievable piano player. And we went in the studio, we recorded the music, which some of it was actually supposed to be like pop music. I orchestrated it to new agey music. And then I did visualizations while people are doing exercises. So, um, so I, so I did that back in 2009. I did that for the neck. And then I went in a couple of years later and did the low back. So, um, I don't know where that stuff comes from, but I, but I left because I go, well, you know, if somebody could have just told me that I was connecting the music with the healing, it would have been a lot easier. I could have gotten here really quick, but it, but it was, it was interesting writing music for a video it, because that's what I, because as a kid, I used to always listen to the theme in the beginning the themes of all the, the TV shows and it, and it, and it till this day, it, it's amazing to me how different they are, the instrumentation that they use. And a lot of times you can tell what year a show is just listening to the music. Hmm. So I'm, I'm very, I'm a very auditory person, obviously. Is there somewhere, perhaps even on YouTube, can we get a glimpse if we Google just a little bit of your previous career? Is it out there? Uh, my rock band. Um, I don't know. I don't know if we have any audio of that. The, the guys that were in the rock band with me, they, because I was the only woman, I was the bass player. We had two guitars, keyboard and drums. They're all out playing. Um, but um, I don't know if there's anything on YouTube of our stuff. I don't think we had video. It wasn't like we had cameras back then mm. to do that. They just have photos on Facebook uh, mm. of what we looked like and who we were opening for. So they, they would show different things. Uh, and, it, you know, I mean, that's a long time ago. Yeah. Because I'd love to get a glimpse into that, that era. Maybe yeah. later on we can find and, and link to it somewhere. Yeah, my, one of the guys in the band now, Lee, he's with a group called the British Invasion, and they do all, um, they're all over this area, and they do all of the 60s, 70s British groups, and they are, they're awesome. Hmm. Wow, I, um, I'm, I'm impressed. I love, I love art. I love creativity. I, I personally spent many years in that world, not as a musician, but as the actor filmmaker. So I get it. I respect it. I love it. Let's pivot for a minute back to your chiropractic days, current times. You are, um, you're nationally published in um, different journals, of course, and one of the articles you've written is, uh, is called Seven Healthy Habits of Highly Productive Business Owners. And something else you wrote is called Habits of Healing 21-Day Program. I'm recently a, um, a fan acknowledging how habits color everything we do. And I'm actively today consciously working to create better habits day in and day out. Talk to me about that. Yeah, the 21 day healing program, uh, again, no idea where that idea came from because I know at the time I knew more about acupuncture than I did about chakras. And that program is based on chakras and yoga. So, um, so in that program, uh, and we're trying to get it up and running. And of course, the technology is uh, got me on a, in, a, in a speed bump there. So, um, but it should be out soon. Um, but I started it and it basically, um, I call it 21 day decreased stress and anxiety in 21 days because it, it does that. But what it, really what it is, is uh, there are seven chakras and I spend three days on each. and uh, you know, the first day of each one covers something that's physical, something that's mental, emotional, spiritual, and then something that's either environmental or nutritional in nature. And um, there are emails that go along with that. And so I have, I called it body scan. There's a body scan and it's a visualization of someone teaching people to meditate. I'm not 
for me, I'm a very hyped kind of person, even though I don't look like I'm hyped, I never stop. So um, for me, I'd rather go to the gym, do the elliptical, get on the weights, to sit there and take a yoga class, I'm, I, I do it, and I'm, and I'm constantly looking at the, the clock. Talk to me about chakras. I, I sort of get them. Can you give us an example, specifically, one of the chakras, um, how you said you spend three days uh, physically, spiritually, environmentally. Can you, can you walk us through one of each of those so we understand? Sure. Uh, we'll start with the root chakra. Okay, the root chakra is, is the grounding. It is grounding. The first three chakras have to do with your physical being. The fourth chakra is your heart. It's the transitional. And the last three have more to do with spiritual in nature. So um, the first chakra is the color red. It is the um, musical note C. And, um, and, and this is something, too, that I'd like to play with with different healing techniques. But um, in this particular program, I always start with the body scan. And in the body scan, I do a visualization with the music I wrote from the, you know, the, the, the feet all the way up to the head. And I, I go through the chakras. People don't know that's what I'm doing, but that's what I'm doing. And asking them, okay, are you feeling any pain? Are you feeling any discomfort? Do you have any, uh, and then I'll go into, do you have, when I get to the organs, do you have any digestive issues? Do you have any reproductive issues? Um, you know, uh, bladder problems, UTIs, yeast infections, uh, IBS. A lot of people have IBS, colitis, all kinds of problems, uh, thyroid problems. And so when you get up to the throat, right, the thyroid, so... And that's the color blue. So, um, so the first, so every day I do that. And every day I want to know, I want to know, okay, what is your, on a scale of one to 10, what is your energy level? Uh, what is your pain level? And I, and, and so we can monitor, okay, so this is day one. What happens at day 21? And what is your stress level? Those three things I want to know. Pain, stress, energy. Because what do people complain about? People always come in, I'm so stressed. I have 15 year olds come in and tell me how stressed they are. And so what is their stress level, right? And, and everybody has stress. It, it's more about how your body responds to the stress. Because even, even good stress is stressful. People getting married, it's funny that like months before people get married, they're coming in, their backs out, their necks out. It, 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 it's amazing. It's, it's very stressful to get married, but it's a happy event. And uh, so I want to know those three things, stress, pain, because most people will experience back pain. 90% of the, the population will experience back pain in their life. Um, and energy. People are always tired. People are dragging. People are uh, I need a cup of coffee, I have to take a nap, they're exhausted. And that has to do, of course, with stress. Because that's, those are our stress, our adrenals are our stress hormones. Mm -hmm. So when we're stressed out, that adrenaline isn't pumping like it should, and that cortisol starts, and then we start gaining weight. That's what happens there. But that's, that's what I do with the program. So, um, so they'll have, they'll have a, a a stretch to do or a yoga pose to do or some type of physical activity on those three days. And then they'll have something emotional. I might have them just meditate. And then every chakra has its own visualization. It's a 10 minute visualization. Um, in fact, I had to actually go back and make them 10 minutes each for Patrick Porter's program, um, the chakra healing that he has on there. So I made them because I, they were all different timings. Um, and so that was fun. And, and now before we, before we wrap up, I also want to make sure we touch upon the seven healthy habits of highly productive business owners. Share one, please. What is the one habit that could be uh, a game changer for many people listening? I think I'm just, 
Sorry, I'm just putting my uh, computer. Knows it. I don't want it to die on us. Um, well, again, those seven habits follow that triad of health, which is what my podcast habits of healing is all about. So there's the physical, uh, there's the mental, emotional, spiritual, and then there's the chemical. So if I start with just the physical, I, I say to people, okay, what do you do for yourself? What do you do to help yourself? Phys Health-wise, what, what habit do you have? And a lot of times people have nothing. I said, well, do you get adjusted? Do you do yoga? Do you get a massage? Do you exercise? You know, there's movement. Movement is life. So when you're talking about that physical being, that's, you know, those are some of the habits is walk. Just walk, move. You can't just do nothing. We're not meant to do nothing. Uh, spiritual, mental, emotional, spiritual, what do people do? You know, some people, the church, they go to church, they pray, whatever it is. Some people meditate, um, but some people do biofeedback, but there's something you have to do to help that aspect. And then when you get to nutrition and environmental, what do you do? Are you smoking? Are you consuming a lot of alcohol, a lot of caffeine? Are you eating uh, genetically modified foods? Are you eating hybridized food? Like I, had, like I had said to you, how could you be Italian and be allergic to wheat? Well, because what our ancestors ate and our DNA recognizes is not what we're consuming today. So does that answer your question? Yes, yes. There's a lot, a lot of uh, wonderful things to take in there. Do you believe that everything happens for a reason? I do. Do you? Uh, yes, thank you for uh, returning the question. Yeah. I, I do, and I think more importantly, our job is to, quote unquote, make sense of everything that happens, whether in the moment or after the moment, because in the moment, you might not realize, what the heck is this happening for? Well, how, how is this good? How is this helpful? But lo and behold, it is and it will be. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think, I think when we're on when we're on the path that we're supposed to be on, um, where things are good. I think sometimes we're hit with things that are really atrocious because we need a little bit of a tilt to get back on that path, get mm. on that road the right way. And, and I think what happens, and I see this a lot because I treat a lot of female patients, um, I see that they have that empty nest syndrome. So, they, they're one person before they get married, then they get married and they kind of start losing who they are. And the men do the same thing, but typically, um, even though in some cases now the men are the stay at home dads, but typically it's still the woman that's the stay at home or the one that's taking care of the children. And then when the children go away to college, it's like, well, who am I now? You know? Here I was, I was single, then I was a wife, and now I'm a mom, but who am I? What? So, so I always encourage them when, to think about, well, when you were younger, what did you like? What did you do? Did you play tennis? Did you like to do artsy crafts? Did you like to do music? What did you like to do that was that inspirational part of you, that creative side? Because, because of the creative side, is really thrown by the wayside because we're so materialistic and we're so much into math and science, but that creative side, which is the right side of your brain needs to connect with the left. So you can be the smartest person. If you don't have that right side, you don't know how to mesh it. So the real geniuses have right and left brain balance. Hmm. What do you believe happens when it's all over? when our time here on earth comes to an end? You know, it's funny that you asked that because last night I, I, would, I, I just joined a book club and we, the book that we're reviewing is called uh, The Seed of Your Soul by uh, Gary Zook. Zook Zoop, I know it, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. And so we, we were hitting on some of this stuff. And I think that, I believe that we're all part of uh, the same energy and i think we have different 
planes of existence, dimensions. I think there are dimensions that we don't know exist. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Albert Einstein. I think the man, I don't know how he knew this stuff a hundred and something years ago. Just brilliant. I, his theories are being proven now. And so I think that we're all connected. And I think that I think that we go on. I, I don't think when we take our last breath that that's it. I don't believe that. I, I think that that energy, which is our soul, or which is that spiritual part of us, um, I don't think it dies when the physical part dies. I think it just changes uh, whatever that might be. I will leave you with this one final question. How would you... Dr. Donna Perillo, like to be remembered. Oh, my epitaph. Uh, <laughs> I haven't really thought about that. Um, I guess I would like to be remembered as someone that helped other people. That's Great. Much, I mean, that's what I. That's pretty much what I do. I help people. And, um, and I enjoy doing it. And I'm fortunate enough to be able to make a living doing that. Spectacular. Well, there we go. You have successfully shattered all stereotypes. If you think you know Dr. Donna Perillo, oh, there is more to her than meets the eye and the ear. I, I, I'm, I'm, just, uh, I, I'm just so impressed, so excited we had this moment to chat today. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to be on your show. This is fun. I love all these questions. Absolutely. And it is the rock legend herself right there. Again, shattering all stereotypes. I love that part of your story. Oh, yeah. It was fun. That, that was, uh, it's fun. You know, sometimes my, my dad said to me once, he goes, don't you wish you just went right to chiropractic school and you never did the music stuff? And I looked at him and went, absolutely not i was in my 20s i mean we we were we were in vegas we were uh, just we had a ball we had a ball and i was doing what i loved that's it i was doing what i loved and you're still clearly doing what you love to this day till this day i'm doing what i love that's the trick that's the secret huh that's i i tell all the kids i go don't worry about the money if you do what you love the money will come you have to do what your heart's in. Well, there you go. We will leave it at that. I so appreciate you, Dr. Perillo. I also appreciate everybody's ears who is out there. You know the deal. We're going to do this again real soon. I hope you found some nuggets of value, motivation, and inspiration in this chat and dialogue. Until we do it again, go get them. <laughs>